just saying, I'd like to thank everybody who came out to the World Craft Fair uh, that we had yesterday out here. Um, it, we had 36 people and um, seemed to have a good time, had a little bit of food, a little bit of fellowship, and, and did a little bit of work for the Lord. And uh, for anybody that's here that didn't get a chance or that's interested in doing anything like that, um, remember the money will be, even though the money's coming for dog wood, it's, we're, we're getting nothing off of it. So it's all going straight back to World Craft. Um, I do have catalogs with me. I know some of you have asked if I bring them back with this. this uh, morning if you'd rather just take home with you and bring back tonight, that's fine. So thank you again. It was a good time. Um, to all the ladies who brought food. Thank you. You know, we tried some new recipes and we're good and some were a little different. And it still was a good time. It was still a good time. Um, it was for good cause. And um, also I need to tell everybody here that the youth um, tonight, we're going to start out in the sanctuary just up through the singing part that we're going to go to the back and work on songs. So the youth have a couple singing events that's coming up at the end of September, in case they have failed to tell their parents. Um, September 24th is a Saturday. They'll be out here singing that evening at about 6 o'clock. Um, they're going to sing Sunday morning on the 25th, and then they're actually going to Glendale um, on the 28th to sing at their revival. Um, right. So the youth will be singing three times in a row, so we have some songs that we need to work out. So if they could be back here tonight, that would be fabulous. Amen. And um, if you're a youth and you're not singing, you'd like to join us. Um, if you're a whole person, so say, come join us at 5 o'clock. Right. We were going to sing a song. Um, we're going to save it for this evening. Um, something's been bothering me about doing it this morning, though. It's a good song, good message, and it just didn't seem to really fit with, with the events that are going on today. So we're going to sing um, a standard out of the hymn book, and I'd like for you all as congregation to join us. So it's number 630 in your book. It's very beautiful. And if you wouldn't mind rising and singing with us, because we do such a beautiful job. Let's just Sing to God about our great country that He's allowed us to have. Amen. And pray that, as we said earlier this morning, that the leaders turn back to Him um, before it's everlasting too late. Amen.
debt. But today has kind of worked out where we've been reminded a lot of that. And even like that <coughs> pencil, you know, at the end of the pencil thing, you know, it's no good, it's no good, she does. But even God can take a used up pencil and yeah. make something beautiful yeah. like yeah. that we've never even thought of. <coughs> so I want you to remember this week as you go out to school and your daycare and different places of work we have to go, that you are just like this pencil. Let God hold you in his hand Amen. and guide you. And he will be with you forever. Amen. Now let's pray and thank God. Amen. Dear God, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our church family. We thank you for all these young people who are here. God, we thank you for the old people who are here who are God to us. We thank you for the people that you have placed in our lives. We thank you for our church that we're able to come and to worship you. Yes. God, we just pray right now that you forgive us of any sins that we've committed. Dear God, that we can focus on hearing your word, that we can go out this week, and that we can be that pencil and allow you to guide us in everything that we do, that we can bring you honor and glory with our lives. Amen. Amen. Here, 
that we need to look at the deity of Christ in verses 1 and 2. It says, And in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Jesus refers to Himself as being the Word. And it says the same was in the beginning with God. Now, the, this scripture here that John is penned there as God has led him to is to identify the deity of Christ Himself. He was not just a, a carpenter's son. He was born of virgin birth, the only virgin birth that has ever occurred in the history of existence itself. Not just when mankind was here, but I'm talking about period. Uh, he is the only virgin earth. But according to God's Word here today, uh, He was the Word. And the Word was God and was made form in, in the form of man, as we would refer it to here. And He came to earth to take on the form of man, not just that He could live here 33 and a half years, but that He could get prepared to die for mine and your sin. Had He not shed His blood today, you and I would not be saved. We would still be under the old law. We'd still be, our sins would still be uh, just progressed forward from one year to the next. But glory to God because of this Christ that we are preaching about this morning. We have the forgiveness of sin. Amen? Amen. I'm glad that He forgives. He does not remember. I'm glad today that He chooses not to remember. But in identifying there the first two verses as identifying the deity of Christ, I want to look at what it says there in verses 3 through 5. All things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was. I want us to understand today that nothing was by accident. I mean, I have yet to figure out why God made fire ants. I have no idea why He does it. But He made it. There's got to be a purpose other than just aggravating society. Uh, sometimes, I'm not sure, uh, why did He make mice? But I know that there is a reason for them in the cycle of life. Uh, not understanding why He made other things that we don't see a lot of use for, but if something were not in the balance of, uh, of nature itself, if it was left out, we might have something that would really be bothering us to be worse than that, amen? And it's hard to believe anything's worse than fire amen. But, uh, did get amen. Amen. But it said, it said by Him were all things made. Folks, I think it's really important that our young people realize that God is the creator of all things. And we need to be careful how we treat this creation uh, that He gave us. We, we are ruining creation in our society today uh, uh, environmentally because of so much exhaust and, and so much things that we've done that God never intended for us to do in the beginning. All this industrial age that come about has created a lot of ozone spots and I'm not a scientist by any means, not going to stand up here and try to tell you that I understand it all, but they tell us that these ozone spots that have occurred in, in the ozone there eventually is going to allow uh, elements of the sun to come through and, and, and cause great harm to us physically there. And, and, and then, I, but I, I'm just a, an old Baptist preacher, the only thing I could go to was go look over in the book of Revelation. And I just praise God that I'm... Revelation chapter 4, verse 3, I'm out of here, and I'm not going to be here when that sun gets so hot that it cooks the back of man. And man is going to look for a place to hide from the very elements. Folks, I want to tell you, people worry about uh, man destroying this earth. Don't you worry about that. Man may create within themselves a lot of discomfort, but they, God don't need any help when it comes to the time of destruction. God is going to speak destruction. And that, that is something that I don't even believe that when Jesus comes back that we're going to be involved in the battle of Armageddon. But scripturally that is not so. We're not going to be involved in the battle of Armageddon. Jesus himself is going to fight that right by himself. As he spoke this word into existence, he's going to fight that battle of Armageddon when uh, the blood gets to the horse's bridle. As him fighting that battle, we're going to be sitting over here on these white horses just looking at all this going on. Folks, I'm going to tell you, God does not need any help. Amen. We need God, but He don't need us. Amen. Amen. The Scripture says here in verse 4, it said in verse 3, that, that, that anything that was made was, not, was made by Him. It said, In Him was life, and life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the dark, darkness comprehended it not. 
See, darkness does not exist. Do y'all realize that darkness is only the absence of light? If I were to close all these windows here today, and we could light one little teeny match here, it would be light. And therefore, darkness could not exist. Darkness only occurs from the absence of light. And you in your life, when you get in a darkened state, you in your life, when you don't allow God to be the light of your world, you become darkness because you choose not to let the light shine in your life. He is our light. His name is Jesus. He is the Christ, the light of the world. He is our Redeemer. He is the one that creates the absence there of darkness in our lives. I glory to God. I'm glad the light shines in my life that I don't have to experience darkness. I, I, can any of you young ones ever remember being scared of darkness? Did it ever bother any of y'all? Y'all, y'all, I mean, didn't think of being honest. Or the rest of us, they think it's small children. I was too. I was honestly scared of darkness. I mean, I mean, it, when they cut the light out at home, and I, we didn't have any little plug-in things, you know. At, at, when, when I was raised, you know, we didn't have any little plug-in things over there, no night lights, nothing like that. I mean, you had the moonlight, but when you didn't have the moonlight shining through that window, our bedrooms became so dark that you could feel the darkness. And I can remember it as a little fella, I mean, just crying out to Mama, Mama, don't cut the light off until I go to sleep. And I, I, I knew that when she cut that light off and I wakened in the middle of the night and there was darkness there, I knew that Mom and Dad was just right in that next room from us right there on the wall dividing us. I knew the safety of Mom and Dad was there. But darkness scared me. I can remember walking down the road as a 10, 11-year-old boy. And when I got near a cemetery somewhere, I'd step up my step. And the closer I got to that cemetery, the faster I run. <laughs> I guess I just thought them people was going to get up out of them graves out there and come get me. But since now that I've got older, I found out I ain't got to worry about the dead ones and live ones. Like I'm dead. <laughs> That's the ones that want to steal and kill and, and molest and do all this stuff. It ain't them dead people you got to worry about. It's them live ones out there. Listen, the Bible said here, go down if you would with me in verse 6. It said there was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness and to bear witness of the light that all men through him might live. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Listen to verse 9, what it says. That was the true light which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Listen to me. John was the forerunner of Christ. We know that he was born approximately six months before Jesus said. We know that he went out there into the desert and, and prepared himself. The Bible said that he came back and he was girded about with camels, with hair, with uh, hair about his body. And he was girded about his loins. And he went out and he had lived there on that locust and honey. And he prepared to come back and to preach God's word. And he had followers there. But uh, and there was some of them began to think that he may have been the Messiah. And he could have there. If it had been in our modern day, like, well, we got some of these televangelists, they'd grab the hold of that and hurt. Oh, yes, I'm the one you've been looking for. Uh, send me your money there. I'm supposed to live like a king in this world. That's what these televangelists are doing today. They're wanting to become kings and, and queens in our society. But John cried out. He said, I am not a light, but I tell you of one that is coming. He is the true light. And his name is Jesus. John there cried out and told them that there was one coming after him and he was not worthy even to unloosen his shoes. Even to bow down and loosen his shoes that he could wash his feet from the dusty day of travel. John gave reverence to Christ only because he knew uh, that by the Holy Spirit of God. You know that when uh, Mary came and visited there, uh, Elizabeth, and they were both carrying their babies in their wombs and there. When John came in the presence of Jesus, the Bible says that he leaped in his mother's womb at the very presence of Christ. Folks, I want to tell you today, when Jesus Christ gets into your being and into your presence, you will jump and you will become a different person. Amen. John lived a life as being the forerunner of Christ. John was willing there to proclaim the gospel there and to let them know that Christ is the answer. Listen to me, go a little further if you would. 
down there about this in verse 12. It said there in verse 11, uh, in verse 10 and 11, he was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came to his own, and his own received him not. All oh, friends, you know, Jesus had to feel a total rejection more so than you and I. Do you ever get around sometimes and, and somebody just acts like they just don't like you? Does that bother you at all when somebody acts like they just don't like you? It just bothers me to death if I think somebody's ill with me or, or mad with me. It bothers me. I don't like it when, some, when I think that somebody don't like me. Now, now you, you may not want, want to be around me a lot. There might be a reason for that. And, 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 and I might have created that atmosphere. But folks, I'm telling y'all today, it's not a comfortable thing. Can you imagine how Jesus felt? He created that world. He was there. He created the mountains and the rivers. And, and He created men and women. And, and He knew as a result of His creative uh, activity there, Him and God the Father and God the Holy Spirit, along with Jesus, God the Son, they created all of this and that day. Can you imagine how He felt when they rejected His doctrine? When they rejected His call to repent of their sins? When they rejected Him? When they lied at a trial? And he was carried to a cross of Calvary and died for his sin. Can you imagine how he felt? How rejection, how much rejection just broke his heart? Folks, I want to tell you today. The Bible says he came into his own, and his own received him not. Going with me, verse 12. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even them that believe on his name. All oh, glory to God. Aren't you glad today that God did not categorically say that only blondes could be saved? It'd be alright with you, wouldn't it? Actually, if he said only blondes could be saved, you're a blonde. But I'm glad today he didn't just say that only certain people of a certain race could be saved. I'm glad he didn't say that. I'm glad he didn't just say, well, only Jews can be saved. Although they were God's chosen people, but when Jesus stood there at their Calvary's cross and he laid on that cross for them to nail his hands and his feet, that he said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That included you and I. Folks, I'm glad today that he made salvation available to all mankind. I'm glad he said that whosoever will. And the Bible says here that he said in verse 12, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even them that believe in his name. I left a message the other day on somebody's phone, and I told them this was God's son calling. <coughs> Billy kind of looked at me. I believe it was Billy. Somebody who ever was with me kind of looked at me kind of strange. I said, well, I am God's son. I have you to know. The Bible said we become heirs and join heirs of Jesus Christ. He's my father. And I was not being uh, blasphemous to say that. We are God's children if we go into the family of God. You are God's daughter. You are God's son today if you go into the family of God. And you ought to feel like that. And you ought to watch where you carry Jesus uh, through He the Holy Spirit. He, he, you are the dwelling place of God. God does not want to be dwelled in some temple somewhere and, and be left there and you claim, well, uh, where is God? Well, he's over yonder in the temple in Israel somewhere. Well, I, I just hope someday that I can work hard enough and, and save up enough money. I'm going to get me a plane ticket and I'm going to go over there where God is. I'm glad it's not like that. Hallelujah. I'm glad the ticket was paid for on the cross of Calvary. And I'm glad that we can get down on our knees. And I thank you, young people, for starting off this uh, uh, youth sermon this morning, the children's sermon this morning. Thank you for moving out. I'm glad today that we can get ready to meet God wherever we are up in our heart. You may get saved at your house. You may get saved in a jail cell. You may get saved in a hospital. You may get saved at an altar. But wherever you got saved, you're saved. And you are becoming the dwelling place of God. You have become the dwelling place of God through the Holy Spirit. Look with me if you would. Verse 13. Where it talks about in verse 12, it says, He gave power. But He gave them, He gave He power to become the sons of God even them that believe on his name, which were born 
not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. You're not born into the family of God today because you're a fowler. I'm sorry, fowler. Not all fowlers are saved. You're not part of the family of God today because you're a journey. Not all journey are saved. You're not a part of the family of God because you're a Floyd. Not all Floyds are saved. We were talking this week and we was over at, uh, I believe, at a restaurant and we began to talk about something that was going on and someone was talking about some, somebody else and their family relations and come to find out that I was related into the family. I said, well, you know, you, you can't choose your kin. I mean, a lot of things go on, but I couldn't do nothing about it. And you're the same way. Not all fowlers walk on water. Not all pals can sing. Pence Lee said, I'd read a symbol that remark. <laughs> Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's not by a hair that you're here today. It's not because of whom that you are. It's because who Jesus is. That's the reason today that we're forgiven. That's the reason today that we have opportunity to serve God. That's the reason today that we can come boldly before the throne of grace and pray about the circumstances of society. That's the reason today that we can cry out to God and say, have mercy on America, although America is living like what she is. It is all about His mercy, His love, His willingness to forgive. It's God. Go to verse 13, I conclude. Talking about which were born, not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. I realize this is talking about the Christ. I realize this is talking about the Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. But folks, when he talk about that, we are the form of God. We are God's created people. God loved us so much that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him would not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. He said over in chapter 3 and verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. God is our birth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our birth experience comes about when we come to Him and repent of our sins. I spoke to a woman recently there about repenting of our, of our sins and she kind of looked at me with a strange look on her face. It's like she did not had not recently heard about the word repent. I'm afraid today in our Baptist churches that we're not hearing much about repenting of our lifestyle. Folks, I want to tell you today upon the authority of God's word, God still requires repentance in order for a person to be saved. Repentance means that we will surrender our will to His will and we will live like we have been saved by the marvelous grace of God. Both a Christian needs to have a different lifestyle. Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, let's go back to verse 13. And I'm going to remind you there. I'm going to read the 14. I might have got a little bit further than what I told brother, uh, uh, this morning, Jerry. But that's all right. He's sitting over there saying that he's made a mess out of this, not me. <laughs> verse 13 said, Which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Glory to God. You know what verse 14 said? It said that uh, uh, Jesus there was full of grace and truth. Folks, it don't make any difference today whether or not that we think that we need to be saved. The Bible says, marvel not that I say that you must be born again. Folks, the Bible says we're born in sin and shaped in iniquity. We all fall short of the glory of God. Listen to me. We all need the forgiveness of God. Amen. We're none. No, not one good. No, we're not good. We're just forgiven. I'm glad today that I'm living forgiven. We're going to come in this time of invitation today. You know, as the sister mentioned about the pencil there, and she talked about that it could not be used if it were not sharp. You could take a pencil, and you could, if I didn't push this out right here, I could take this right here, 
and try to ride all I want to and draw all kinds of circles, but it would not make any circles because the ink part that would be projected out there was not pushed out. Folks, I want to tell you today, talk about a little pencil over that she had. I looked at that, you know, she talked about the pencil getting short and where you couldn't trim it anymore. Sometimes I get like I believe I've been trimmed out. I kind of believe I've been putting the pencil sharpener too many times and need no room for sharpening lead. But I'm glad that God has still let us make a mark. I look upon you that it's got age on you, even some more than me, and you feel like that you're not making a mark. You'd be surprised how many times uh, that I, when I sit down there with these deacons and they remind us there, the former deacons that have served on that deacon board and how they were faithful in their living, how they were faithful in how they lived in this community and started programs and worked to build this church to what it is today. Folks, we're getting ready to uh, send off that pictorial, I think, this week and, and get it made up. And I look into the pages of that pictorial of what I've seen them uh, fix up there and I see the very legacy of what was started here in 1896 living on the pages of that book today. I thank God that I can look at Dogwood Hill Baptist Church and I can see some faithful servants that are yet still willing to come out here on Tuesday night and witness to somebody and tell them about Jesus. I see some faithful servants that will be out here faithfully there as much as possible on that third Saturday, out here giving food, putting it in into the cars of others. I see some faithful servants out here that are going there uh, to cut the grass of others and not charging them a dime. I even see some young men that are doing that same thing, have their own lawnmower ministry of going out and cutting somebody's grass and not charging them a dime. Now, I'm telling you what, folks, that just tells me that these people at Dogwood are willing to make a difference in society. And I tell you what, it makes me feel good to be your pastor, and not only to be your pastor, but to be a member with you at Dogwood Hill Baptist Church. Amen. Glory to God. I want to ask you now that you would stand to your feet. Before he announces the paper, don't get involved in the papers right now. I'm going to ask all of you that can, those of you that can't remain seated.